Alrighty, today is September 12th, 2023 at about 9 in the morning. And we're looking at the corner of Kentucky and North 4th, uh, 401 Kentucky, which was supposedly the first home of John Brooks Henderson, who was the U.S. Senator from Missouri and author of the 13th Amendment and introduced that amendment to Congress back in, I think, 1862, if I'm not mistaken. Anyway, historic, historic, historic. One account says this house was built in 1870. I suspect a bit earlier. I'm guessing Civil War period, if not a little earlier. Late 50s? Usually you can tell because the chimneys on these earlier homes are uh, away from the central part of the house. Seem to be always on the ends for whatever reason. Anyway, I got permission from the owner last night. Like a kid before Christmas, I could hardly sleep waiting to get here to probe the backyard. It's a tiny backyard. I'll have this puppy probed out in 20 minutes. So I'm crossing my fingers and hoping you are too. Because if I find it, it should be a good one. If not historic, at, at least, you know. Uh, one J.B. Henderson bottle <laughs> coming up. Yeah. So as I was previously yakking about this little add-on came about somewhere after 1876 earliest sandbar map for this place is 1896 and it was here by then so somewhere between then and there this was put on and I am suspecting that this is not where the privy was uh, you know, one can only speculate these things till you get a probe in the ground. But anyway, um, it certainly does have some age to it. Uh, for the most part, it looks like they use the old-fashioned soft bricks or the more orange-looking kind. Uh, even even this little lean-to is, yeah, that might be a little bit newer. But anyway. On the Sanborn map, it showed where there might be a privy right along where that tree is, along the property line. Uh, my my best guess is back, eh, I'm thinking back in that area. I think one of the later Sanborn maps shows something almost where that tree stump is. I'll have to look at it again, but that's where I'm going to start. Is that corner and work my way towards this corner. That's the plan. Well, okay, it's about an hour later after I started all this, and uh, right at the foot of that stump, um, my four-foot probe felt like something was going on. My five-foot probe kind of confirmed it. I felt like I hit glass at five feet right under a stump wouldn't you know it but anyway I'm uh, I'm just waiting for the owner to get back to me because he wants to join me on the dig younger fellow who's got good interest in history and everything so uh, that's what I'm doing I'm holding off it's like you know sitting under the Christmas tree waiting to tear open the the wrapping <laughs> Yeah, being told, no, you gotta wait, gotta wait, you gotta wait. So, that's what I gotta do, I gotta wait. <laughs> that's what I'm doing. Uh, I wanna just start slinging dirt right now. You know, you know the feeling. Uh, yeah, you know what I'm talking about. Well, alrighty, it's about uh, one o'clock. And the dogs love my voice. As soon as I start talking, they start yapping. <laughs> anyway, we've got our spot tarped out. We've got our place flagged out. 
And we're about to open this puppy up. I even have my trusty uh, new handsaw. I got the feeling I'm going to need it. That close to a stump. But it's an old stump, so... Uh, hopefully it'll be easier digging than most stumps. Anyway, it looks like they planted it right over the privy hole. Which tells me we might not be in a very old privy. But... You know, at this stage of the game, I'll take what I'm given, you know, and like it. I used to said, and I don't have to like it, but now I do. <laughs> I'm just at that age, you know. All right, we'll keep you posted. All righty, this is uh, first, uh, first bottle in the hole. I did dig up a jar that didn't look so old and pieces of a machine made fruit jar. This looks like a wine. Wine. Ooh, it's a mineral water. Well, well, well. If that were amber, I'd be excited because we have an amber Frank Bomey. Bohm. God, how do we how do you pronounce it? Boehm, <laughs> Boehm, Frank Boehm Sr. has a amber one of these, with embossing on it. It's just the rarest bottle in town. Looks just like this green guy. This is a plain turn mold, which is redundant because every turn mold is plain, mainly because. If they blew it in a mold that had embossing, they still would have spun it, or a spin mold as they call them. And then you end up with these concentric rings where they spun it in the mold. Well, that's 1890s all day long, for the most part. Yeah, by 1900 they weren't doing that. So, well, one for the homeowner. That's for you, Jay. <laughs> okay, back to the dig. Well, okay, at the end of the day, not a lot to show for it. Um, I did manage to extract a huge part of the trunk with help from uh, Detector Jeff here. And uh, managed to undermine it a bit. There might still be a bottle or two left back under these roots, but by and large, I think it's mostly just a shallow trash pit. I'll come back tomorrow and give it hell. I still swear I hit something glassy five feet deep, and deepest I got in this thing was three foot, I think. So, um, but we did get. Uh, a smattering of uh, hand-blown stuff, most notably this uh, Crafts, uh, did I misspell it? No, it's a C. Crafts weird. Distemper and Cough Remedy. Kind of looks like it says Couch Remedy. Uh, it definitely remedied me for, stay, for getting off the couch. <laughs> Anyway, uh, and this cool pre-pro whiskey flask with a fancy panel and flowers and then a label that I might be able to clean up and read, but it's machine made, so it's not very exciting, but probably late teens, you know, late World War I period. Did get this uh, tooled top olive oil with a readable pure olive oil label on it. Um, looks like it's from some some company out of uh, Cincinnati, maybe? Yeah, I'll take it home and try to clean that up, too. Unusual that anything comes out with a, with a label on it. Uh, a little 
very little Chamberlain's colic and diarrhea remedy. Um, they got rid of the cholera on the later bottles, I believe, even though it's tooled top. Um, I think 1906 made them get rid of uh, cholera. <laughs> it's like, nah, can't advertise that. Whatever. And a undamaged dish, which is unusual. It's got a marking on it. I didn't clean it up and look at it. Mainly because it wouldn't do any good without my glasses. And a Virginia Dare without the head. Machine made. Machine made beer. Machine made Lysol. Old Ed Pinot. Mmm, headless. No big whoop whoop. This was the absolute first thing out of the hole, and that was like, what is going on here? Looks like a frosted jar of some sort. Machine made, maybe semi automatic. Kind of hard to tell. I never did get into searching for the seam on it, but eh, whatever. So, anyway. Nothing real exciting other than the fact that it's not a privy. I can guarantee that. So, I will be back for however long it takes to find the real privy. And apparently, I called this a small yard. I'm used to this one the size of the city park. So, this one's a bit bigger than I <laughs> originally advertised. Um, so... It may it may take me a couple of days to find the, the actual privy, but I believe I can find it. There's no garage to encumber my hunt. Encumber? Get in the way, you know what I mean? The only thing that might get in the way is that house, because the property originally extended over there. That They had a couple of sheds and a barn in front of that house. But my bet is closer back in this area I didn't really I probed maybe to right about here just over the other side of the dirt pile so I got all that left as prime privy property and then I can start hunting in the less likely areas yep that's the plan okay Wednesday September 13th and it is, what the heck time is this? It is 10.30, almost on the nose. So, I'm here to finish this puppy out. Uh, I don't think there's much finishing to do, but I'm still perplexed why I hit something that felt like glass five feet down, and then at three feet, I tried probing, and I didn't hit anything. So, uh, it's not that much work to shovel down to five feet, a couple feet further just to make sure. Yeah, and then maybe back that away or that away might still be some glass. But the best I can hope for is a late throw or else it's going to be late 90s to late teens. So, I'm uh, anxious to move on and hunt for the old privy, not the new stump hole. <laughs> yeah. We don't need a new stump hole. New. No. Well, all right, boys and girls. Uh, a, gr a good reason to follow up on your gut instinct. Look what just came out. A, uh, to me, an unknown Louisiana-Missouri pharmacy. I'd never heard of Bray's Pharmacy. The Nial store. So now we have two mysteries. And it's in perfect condition, hand-blown. At least it looks perfect. I don't see any chips or cracks. Uh, I have to uh, look up Bray's Pharmacy. But also... The Nial store. I'm used to the Rexall store. And up until a few moments ago, 
I always believed that Nial was a Rexall product, you know, kind of like Craftsman Tools or Sears products, you know. So I'm wondering if this is an early Nial product before Rexall bought them out. I don't, I, you know, hey, I don't know. All I know is <laughs> it's local, it's embossed. I never heard of it. The only thing that could be better would be Pondled and Cobalt Blue. Either one or both. <laughs> you know what I mean. Anyway, uh, back at it. Well, okay. Um, at least an hour or so, maybe two, since my last video. I figured I'd better stop and do a little catch-up here. I, uh... I have roots. Yeah, root. That's baby root. That's mama root. There's sister root. And a few cousins hanging off <laughs> under there. Which is to be expected since I'm digging directly under this stump. Anyway, got a few more bottles. The last one just recently to come out of the hole was this very unimpressive decanter. It's the only thing I can think of to call it. I mean, it's like, it's not terribly big. It is a tooled top, <laughs> which surprised the heck out of me. And uh, a smattering of other things. I got this uh, partial label uh, Franco-American hygienic toilet requisite. Um, with a pretty nice looking uh, neck label. I think I should be able to clean that part up anyway. A lot of these were curling iron fluids and such. And a uh, interesting little ink that still has remnants of a label that would be interesting to read. Uh, the, the only crier really is this beautiful, almost an olive amber lightning fruit jar lid and I believe hard to say as much as missing but looks like a small lid maybe to a half pint I don't know I'm just speculating the next to the last bottle out of the hole was this Idlewise beer um, but sadly it's got a huge split down the side of the lip on the back side boo hoo tool top got some nice bubbles and a little crudity but it's a late tool top because you got the uh, 13 ounce contents embossed on it um, girlfriend in Idaho dug one of these sample ones with a uh, nice little blob top on it. That was the first Idlewise I'd ever seen. And ever since then, I've never seen another one like what she found. The witch. <laughs> and she was. She flew off on her broom with her bottle. And then a smattering of more pharmacy, wanna, wannabe local pharmacies. They probably were local, but they all had labels on them. I got a tall one, a medium one, Papa Bear, Mama Bear, and Baby Bear. And then, these guys are tool top. This malt beer with no embossing other than AB Company on the base for an American bottling company. This bad boy with no embossing and a label that teases you to try to read it which is impossible um, but the coolest thing out of the hole so far has been these cast iron toys I've been digging up Look at this guy just came out of the hole has a big center wheel with two side wheels I thought maybe it was some sort of weird skate setup or whatever but I got I got three of those now I don't know what those go to this hook that came out with this last set of wheels and then I got this you can see the horses prancing off 
with you know a set of wheels under those and a set of wheels in the in the back here. Um, so yeah, some interesting stuff popping out of here. And if I didn't mention it before, I am I have done a 180, and I'm pretty sure this was a privy, an old wood liner. I found a corner post, and uh, nope. No evidence of any night soil, but um, I did find evidence of, I don't know if you can see that or not, and it has me worried for future digs because that is not moving. I thought it was maybe a fruit jar or something, but it's open on the end and it's a drain pipe for the automatic flush toilets that would capture the water from the rain on off the roofs and it would funnel down the the downspouts into a, a clay pipe underground and they would punch it through the sidewall of the privy and then opposite behind this behind me would be a drain hole and so it effectively was an automatic flush toilet. It would drain off into usually like a storm drain because a lot of places they didn't have sewage drains by them, you know. But it seems like they always had a storm drain of some sort. Anyway, um, we will not let it deter or otherwise impede my hunt for the old privy although like I say it's got me a little concerned but as old as this house is I think it predates these uh, automatic flush privies uh, the oldest one I've seen so far is 1880 so uh, still got 10 at least 10 to 20 years which would have been well, a good period for the earliest privy. There might be two privies, 1850s to 1870s, and then 70s to 90s. Typically 20 years for a privy, depending how much they filled it in. Anyway, I think we're getting close to the end of this, and um, uh, I will be back to recap, briefly at least. So while I'm taking a break here, I thought I would show off. I found two amber syringes with different tips. I was thinking the one on the left might have been broken when I dug the one on the right. And clearly they're just two different styles of syringes. Um, very cool. I'm guessing turn of the century. But it's weird because the deeper I go, the newer the stuff gets. Um, what else? What else was remarkable? Well, the deeper I go, the newer it gets. Look at this, a light bulb for gosh sakes. I got two of them now. Um, you know, and just a smattering, you know, the last bottle out of the hole was this machine made guy. Um, so I don't know what's going on. It was a very thin clay cap, and I punched through that, and I'm digging up machine-made stuff now. Go figure. Uh, when I have it figured out, I'll be back and, and tell you about it. Alrighty, last video of the day. Looks like i got to come back tomorrow again to finish this bad boy out. It did drop down a couple more feet. Uh, last decent bottle out of the hole is this uh, mother's friend from Atlanta, Georgia. In good shape, tool top, and it almost looks like it's applied top, but I know better. And then my elusive fellow syrup of hippophosphates. Um, I have yet to dig a tool top one, a hand blown one. This one's machine made, as all, are all the other ones I've ever dug up. And the NB on the earlier ones is not for Nebraska, as I saw in one video. That's for New Brunswick. It's a Canadian uh, bottle, for those of you who don't know better. And I dug up a cool um, 
a cool little cup and it's um, oh hell you can probably read it better than I can it's a uh, famous pottery company I can't remember the darn name of it Weller and the two L's are squeezed together I mean it's like it's got to be an early one I don't know I thought I'd drag it home anyway and the coolest of the toys I got me an early locomotive look at that bad boy the early cow pusher on the front end actually that's a yeah cow pusher the earliest ones were curved upward they were cow catchers <laughs> but anyway it's got the little hook on it where it would have hooked into whatever car had the wheels and it would have gone choo 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 what you oh you want me to do that again okay choo 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 that's that's how it went <laughs> anyway clearly I have kind of lost my mind here I had to saw through these roots down there and oh boy we don't want to go there again so the next time anybody tells me hey I know where there's a privy problem is it's under an old tree root a stump I'll be like yeah I think I'll pass on that <laughs> anyway <clears throat> hopefully we'll clean it out a little better tomorrow and hit the very bottom where I'm standing now and maybe come up with another uh, good local bottle that would be nice nice yeah but I guess uh, bottle goddess would consider that greedy because I only got one local bottle today oh well such is life Sometimes he hasn't for a while. This is uh, JT in, in his first privy hole dig. Um, I think he's already addicted. Are you addicted already? Yeah, that's pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> and he's dug his first two bottles out of the hole. The second one is better than the first one. Um, he's looking for that rare Louisiana soda bottle. There's something there, look at that. Oh yeah, that's probably a part to one of those toys. Yeah. I dug up a hook to one earlier. Here's something else right here. Some kind of old wood handle. It looks like a crank, like a Model T crank or something weird. Yeah. Probably something simpler than that, like an Apple Corp. Yeah. Like machine. Samuel Caldwell. Huh? Samuel Caldwell back in 1820. Samuel Caldwell. Is huh. the one that owned this? Evidently. Well, I don't know if this, I, I'm, I'm assuming the majority of all this. Oh, she wanted, to, wanted me to take a picture of that map you had. So she... mm. Damn, take a look at that one. Here, you can have it. Oh, okay. Oh, oh, sorry. I'm too lazy to move the bottom of that one. yeah that was a uh, that was a jelly jar that they used for a drinking glass after or well sometimes these were uh, like olive jars and stuff too hard to tell if it had a smooth rim left over um, that would be more. Lines on it. it's got bumps you know what those are for to, to gauge the poison in there? No, it's like if you reach in the medicine cabinet in the middle of the night and you feel those bumps, you know it's poison and not to drink it. Wow. What the hell did they want poison for? Oh, you know, ants, rats, rel oh, yeah. relatives, <laughs> ants, <laughs> nephews, uncles. <laughs> yeah. Wives, husbands. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Ex-girlfriends. <laughs> yeah. Sweet. Yeah, that's probably a twenty dollar uh, poison bottle. I'll be darned. Yep, looky there. I didn't even see it. I scooped it up in the bucket. I I recognized what it was as soon as I saw the uh, the shape of it. The, wow. That's the other thing too. A lot of times poison bottles are in a very distinctive shape. There's one that's even in the shape of a skull, and it's cobalt blue. Uh -huh. And those things are worth several thousand dollars, like three or four thousand, depending on the size. Wow. But nice find. That was your first embossed bottle. That's a, that's the way to start. Heck yeah. What what uh what how old is that one? 1890s. Yeah, Turn of the century. Yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. It's uh it's not machine made. It's a tool top. Boy, I'm out of focus here, folks. Alrighty, almost two o'clock on Friday, uh, September 15th. Ooh, and that's out of focus. Let's see if we can get that puppy back into focus here. <laughs> anyway, I'm here to finish this pit that's taken too long to dig. Um, been distracted and otherwise taken away from finishing this out in two days it's gonna take me four but it will be done today so um, hang in there with me hopefully we'll dig up something cool that's the plan okay well first bottle out of the hole on the last day of the dig actually first embossed bottle uh, I was gonna do the uh, typical extraction video but I was sure it was gonna be a Lydia Pinkham's bottle because it was like this and turns out it's my first fellows syrup of hippophosphates that is not machine made it is a tool top and it's undamaged. Yay. So, onward I go. Deeper and deeper. <laughs> Alrighty. All uh, righty. We have a bottle bonanza here in this hole. There's a bottle here and a bottle right there. My guess is the one on the right is a ketchup and the one on the left is a plain slick plain Jane medicine bottle. What do you want to bet? Well, I'll bring you along in a minute as soon as I take a break and rehydrate and I'll be back in the hole. Alrighty, back in the hole, back at it. Blurry camera and all. Boy, I need a new camera. I really do. So, uh, this guy on the left feels pretty solid, and it's my best bet out of the two to actually have some embossing on it. And this guy feels like a ketchup. I don't know. Actually, I take that back. It may not be a ketchup. Oh boy, and they're both in there. Hmm. I keep trying to focus the camera and watch what I'm doing. Digging. <laughs> there we go. Ooh, it's a rare Eddie and Eddie from St. Louis. One of the rarest bottles to ever dig out of the rarest city. I do note the sarcasm in my voice. <laughs> yeah, for those of you who don't know Eddie and Eddie of St. Louis, this is like um, mm, Fletcher's Castoria. Regionally, statewide, I don't know. 
There's probably a dozen stuck in Maine somewhere. <laughs> anyway. Yeah. Back to the task at hand. Hopefully, this will turn out to be something better than a cockroach ketchup bottle. That's what I've started calling them, cockroaches. Oh, can't be a, can't be a ketchup bottle because it's got a big flat panel on this side. Again, what do you want to bet? It's going to be blank on the other. I'll bring you along when I get it wiggled free. It's going to take me a minute with both hands. Yep. Well, I already cheated. I reached underneath and it has no embossing on the other side. At least none that I could feel. Oh, sheesh. I'm sure I had it loose. That thing's a mile long. Urgh. There we go. Now, well, come on, let it go. Whew. You newbies don't pay attention to what I'm doing. <laughs> Do as I say, not as you're watching. Something like that. Ah, there we go. Whew. A big. Gotta be a 12 ounce size. Look at that, I can't even put it in the picture frame. Whew. Big plain nothing. Yep, yep, yep. And the Eddie and Eddie might as well have been plain. Oh well. Shut up, Jack. Finish it up. Well, alrighty. We are done. <laughs> At least I'm done. And uh, one of the things I always caution against is given the bottle got us a hard time for giving you nothing but slicks because uh, the next slick right after I cursed her out was this lovely little amber cone ink minus eh, part of the cone and all of the top <laughs> yeah and I would have taken that and been happy you know oh no bottle goddess heard me didn't want any more slicks yeah, that's one I didn't want. I did, but I didn't. Not in that shape. Anyway, as we uh, descend into the stump hole, as I call it, it's pretty amazing. I mean, even for the holes I've dug, there is a spot right up in there. Uh, kind of hard to see, but back up in there. I can actually see a little bit of sky up there, which tells me this is right at the middle of the stump, and as you can see, maybe it goes back two or three feet past that, back in the shadows. Anyway, uh, got to be an older hole here. <laughs> that seems to be my theme this year. I keep saying that every hole I dig this year there's got to be an older hole on the property somewhere anyway this bad boy went stretched quite a ways I think it's about 10 feet long on the map it shows a big square that measures out to my footsteps to be about 12 feet long so um, yeah this would fit right pretty much inside that square um, yeah, what can I say? Hardly any depth. Well, maybe went five and a half feet at the deepest. Whoa. Sorry, folks. I'm not as agile as I used to be. Anyway, confirmed that was a, a drain, a drain pipe. Uh, Anyway, so, there's got to be an older hole here somewhere. And if I can find this one under a stump, I can find the older one. That's my, that's my position. And uh, yesterday, I don't think I finished filming, the newbie got a poison bottle. His first embossed bottle was a poison bottle, tooled top. 
uh, semi-triangular. The next bottle he pulls out is a Dr. Thompson's eye water. Oddly enough, I've dug up the pondled ones. I've never dug up a 1890s tool top. And then the next one was a major cement, New York. Um, so I come back today, guess what I dig? A three-in-one oil. <laughs> and then what else do I get? An Eddie and Eddie. Oh, God, as common as a Castoria or a Listerine. Uh, other than my prized fellow's syrup of hypophysites, hypophosphates, there we go. I call it hippo because I like to be stupid and silly. Anyway, that is it. Oh, I did dig up a toy gun. Nah, I'll show that later. A toy gun and an old key. The rusty key is pretty cool. <sighs> anyway, time to fill her in and go find the old hole. Yeah. Well, alrighty. I thought I would do a uh, quick follow-up video of what I call the stump hole. Uh, though it lacked the age I was hoping for, it certainly had enough glass in it to keep my interest, and certainly the toys, these cast iron toys, kept popping up. Mostly these guys, uh, uh, I must have dug a half a dozen of these chunks. Maybe some of you toy collectors out there know what this was. I mean, it's got this big solid center wheel flanked by these spoked wheels. And this one was the most complete. It still has a metal uh, shield, I guess, uh, for lack of a better word. Um, at first I thought it was some sort of weird skate or something, but then uh, then I realized, you know what, it was pro possibly, well, I don't know, I think it's too big. Yeah, way too big for that locomotive. I originally thought they might have been the cars that the locomotive would have pulled behind it. But these babies weigh about three or four pounds each, if not more, you know. Uh, heavier than anything else on the table here. Uh, yeah, go figure. The last toy to come out of the hole was this little cap gun. Uh, interesting little rustical. Uh, at first I thought it might have been a, a real gun because it's got some heft to it. But then I realized that trigger guard gun, um, even with it there, I mean, my fingers are way too big. You'd have to be an infant to be able to pull the trigger on this thing. <laughs> yeah. um, uh, the, the horses pulling whatever, originally I had these wheels under the horses, but there doesn't appear to have ever been an attachment there. So I'm kind of putting these at the back and because they are a slightly bit taller than these I'm thinking stagecoach maybe uh, Possibly a fire truck wagon, you know with the with the boiler on or the uh, the, the pumper on the back or whatever uh, It originally I think that little man in the video sadly got stepped on <laughs> uh, but it looked like he had some sort of a weird little gear inside of him that allowed him to maybe spring back and forth, you know, like almost looked like a spring more than a gear, but anyway. And then, you know, the coolest thing, I think, is, is the, uh, the locomotive. Um, and of course, all of these things are just in a real rusty, crusty state. Um, this one is about the crustiest. I mean, honestly, it looks like a big turd. <laughs> I wasn't real keen about handling it at first. When, you know, 
And I, I quickly recognized it for what it was when I saw this part. I was like, oh, that's got to be an old locomotive. So anyway, I mean, it's been years since I've dug up a identifiable toy in any decent shape. Um, gosh, I think the last one was, was like a horse toy, horse drawn toy of some sort. Uh, the problem with these things is, you know, they'll sit on a shelf for 10 years and, you know, in 10 years they'll just be a pile of crud like you see right here. <laughs> you know, it will eventually just uh, keep deteriorating. But uh, anyway, that, that was it for the toys and I'll be right back with the bottle selection because I have a couple of uh, corrections and updates for those. Well, alrighty, these are the bottles uh, that I ended up keeping out of the uh, stump hole. Um, best, of the, best of the bunch, in my opinion, was this local Bray's Pharmacy, the Nial store. Louisiana, comma, long space, Missouri, M-O. Tool top. No, uh, maybe a number three on the base but that's about it. Uh, a nice four ounce size. Uh, 1910-ish. Uh, I discovered the Nial store was a brand in and of itself. It wasn't related to Rexall, but for some reason I had somehow associated Nial with Rexall and I was mistaken. I was not wrong, I was just mistaken. <laughs> Anyway, uh, the Nial store was a, a, a pretty strong competitor of Rexall and some of the other discount drug stores. Um, Braze, I've never heard of. I still can't find anything on them. And why in the world is there such a long space here between Louisiana and Missouri? I have no idea. I've never seen that before. Kind of cool. Something different. Uh, the other correction I have to make. Fellow syrup of hy hypophosphites. I keep saying phosphates, but hypophosphites was a tonic. Apparently some sort of a brain tonic or whatever. Um, originated back east in New York and I think Toronto maybe Canada somewhere and eventually ended up uh, New Brunswick Canada that's what the NB stands for when you see that and um, apparently from what my resources show they were uh, there was an American as well as a Canadian bottle I'm assuming this is the American because it doesn't say NB or St. John's, uh, which would be New Brunswick. Um, and those seem to be the older ones. This one's a, clearly a tool top, not applied. Although I did find one on eBay just like this that clearly had an applied top. So these guys have some age to them. I have yet to hear or see of one that was pondled, but they go back to the 1850s, I believe. Anyway, always a favorite of mine. You know, I, I like medicines that just have strange names, you know. Um, and that one's strange. Strange enough for me. Or cute ones like the mother's friend. Um, yeah, these are... These are nice. I always like digging up the mother's friend or the woman's helper and stuff like that. Uh, weird names like that. And uh, crafts, distemper, and cough cure or remedy. There, there's an earlier one that is a cure. So far, I've dug three of these up that are remedies. Um, can't seem to find a cure. Um, but they're always fun to dig. They're nice and light colored. A um, probably a cure for 
uh, sinus problems. Um, I managed to break the stem that came out the top and was curved a bit. Uh, typically you think of these as a perfume atomizer. They're pretty much based on the same principle. Except instead of spraying yourself with perfume, you spray yourself with a little marching powder mixture in water or whatever. This one has a ground lip, um, which indicates, you know, it's tooled, hand blown, and they had to hand grind it down to smooth it out for the, for the cap because it was a little fancier than some bottles. But, uh, yeah, original cap on it anyway, damaged or not. I tried gluing the stem back on, but it didn't work out. <laughs> yeah. And then this cool little ink bottle, when I first dug it up, I gasped. It was just this most gorgeous purple color. Deep yet almost pinkish purple. Turned out it was full of ink. And I mean... It had a good amount of ink. Um, I have ruined my indoor bucket. <laughs> well, as much as you can ruin a bucket by ink, you know, but hell, it took me three days to wear it off of my hands when I cleaned it all out. Um, it's a cool little ink bottle. I've, I don't recall ever digging one like this. It's whittled. And it looks like a miniature size master ink. You know, I mean, that's only, what, three, three and a half inches tall or so. Uh, just a real cute guy. And if it had a pore spout on it, I would just be like, wow, that's too cool. A sample master ink, which I don't think they ever made, but it was, it was fun to say that. And this is the only shard from a, what I'm guessing, a Congress... An Empire Spring mineral water bottle. It's got that beautiful emerald green color, grass green. Look at that. It's almost the color of the grass out there. Uh, and this one actually has a little glop to it. You're telling me it was applied. Matter of fact, I can stick my finger up to the broken part and feel it. Only evidence of anything older than tool top that I came across. Um, just supporting my theory that the darn thing has, uh, the yard has an older hole. And then these two beautiful amber syringes. And, you know, I don't get excited about syringes for the most part, but these two are different. I mean, I've never dug any like these before. And the, the syringe on this one is different. It's metal. Most of them are glass um, plungers. And, you know, both of these have a different style top to them. This one's kind of flat and and then uh, this guy is not flat. He's got an obviously different top. Plus this one has a little metal place for your fingers to uh, help you support the syringe while you give the injection. Um, yeah, two very cool syringes that I've not seen before. Um, and I actually have a syringe collection, believe it or not. <laughs> and then lastly, this Weller cup, I guess. I don't know if it's a, meant to be a jar or what, but uh, near as I could figure, I mean, Weller dates back a ways. Um, I could not date it by the, the mark. Although I'm sure there's some Weller expert that probably could give me a clue on that. But uh, I'm pretty well convinced this was late 1890s to about 1918. So there you have it. Uh... The newbie friend, like I mentioned in the video, he got a Dr. Thompson's eye water and a poison bottle and a major cement bottle. Boom, boom, boom. Three in a row, just like that. And uh, I was almost getting jealous. 
<laughs> it's, it's that damn newbie, uh, new, newcomer's luck, you know? Uh, anyway, I had fun. Now, uh, now I'm hoping to find that, that older pit somewhere. Although I'm almost fearful it's in the neighbor's yard. Yeah, that may not go over too well at all, but I still have plenty of yard left to, to hunt that I'm in, so fingers crossed again and hopefully we'll have a uh, much older pit to show you next time. Okay folks, I thought I would do a real quick uh, video update. I uh, recently sent, my, sent off arguably my best bottle in my collection, the Ravenna Glassworks flask that I uh, highlighted earlier in this year and uh, I sent it off to uh, uh, bottle cleaner extraordinaire Lou Lambert out in California and I just got it back earlier this week and uh, boy I'm just over the moon with it uh, if you go back to my video and look it's pretty cruddy looking and took me a couple of years to have it in my collection before I went yeah I'll risk it I'll send it out there and basically left it up to Lou he took a look at it as he said it took him two weeks to decide whether or not it was you know stable or not you know like he said it was so thin he was really worried about it um, and he did more than tumble it I mean he restored it it's actually a, a work of art to restore some of these earlier flasks like this it still has some kind of uh, oh I don't know haziness maybe I don't know I, I but what what's striking to me that was imperceptible before you can I don't know if you can see them or not on the camera but there are horizontal lines running through it you almost have to turn the bottle to see them and they remind me of those European gin bottles that have those lines running top to bottom through the glass and I mean this this bad boy it's not only is it crude but it is super thin in places in the shoulders and stuff but that base I mean that those are folds in the glass that I originally thought were chips and uh, you can clearly see they're you know very smooth um, for lack of a better word folds in the glass and how this thing came out without a pontal scar on it I don't know had to be one of the earliest hinge mold pontalless bottles uh, and I mean you I, I can't show it off enough I, I just it, it just takes my breath away sometimes you know but especially now that you can actually see through the doggone thing um, you know just uh, just super beautiful uh, without sounding like one of those bottle auctioneers trying to sell you something look at that dip in the lip <laughs> applied ring on the neck I mean my gosh it's got everything going for it the color is just apparently the color is not so unusual on the travelers flasks or the uh, Ravenna glass company flasks but so far I haven't seen one from the glass works flasks in this color regardless I, I, I treasure it as my number one bottle thought you'd get a kick out of it figured I'd update you on and, oh, and also, you know, I was real resistant in the beginning to having bottles tumbled. It just didn't sit well with me in the beginning. But then, after I saw the results of some bottles that were so cruddy, I I couldn't believe the difference, you know. And so, I've probably had a dozen or so bottles tumbled over the years. And uh, you want something... Uh, that you treasure highly lose the guy Lou Lambert out in California Old West Bottles I believe is his website also makes the best probes on earth 
So there you go, Lou. A shout out for your uh, product and your capabilities. Not only that, he's a bottle digger. You know. So there you have it.